Good morning. Hello there. Good morning. Welcome. As you come in, share, please. As you come in, share the video. Invite some people on, if you will. Invite some people on. Good morning. Hello, everybody. Share the video. Share it. Invite some people on. I appreciate you at 6 o'clock in the morning. Thank you. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, God. We bless you. God, we adore you. We look to you, God. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate your time. Do you know how this goes? you like what I'm saying? You give me those thumbs up. Good morning. It has been a long time, Pastor Bridget. I'm waiting to come to New York. Um, <laughs> um, hello, Paul, uh, Lavetta, Victoria, Brianna, Mr. Jerome. Thank you guys for joining. Could you share this video to your timeline? Or could you go down your friends list and invite some people on? We're going to talk about um, Jacob again. Uh, today we talked about him last week and we were not on here Thanksgiving because I was so so tired from cooking and um, being a mom so I couldn't um, get up on Thursday morning and uh, do purpose cast but we did it Wednesday and Thursday was a holiday so um, we're back today and we're going to talk about Jacob we're going to um, hallelujah amen um, Good morning, Mother Linda. I miss your face. Two Sundays. Um, thank you all for getting on here. Let's get started because I really feel impressed to, uh, I'm just trying to pin a post here real quick. Um, and then go back later. And um, All right. Hello, everybody. Father, we thank you. We bless you, God. We honor you. We adore you. We look to you, Father. You are the author. You are the finisher of our faith. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. There's none like you in the heavens. There's none like you in the earth. You're all seeing. You're all knowing. God, we bless you. We look unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith, the, our faith, the creator, the starter, the ender, the uh, uh, um, originator, the orchestrator. We thank you, Father, for everything that you're doing in this season. We thank you, God, for pouring out your spirit upon all flesh, um, men, women, boys, girls. We thank you, Father, for how you're raising us up, how you're pouring knowledge of who you are into us. We thank you for the revelation of who you are. We thank you for showing us another side of you, God. We thank you, Father, that as we begin to seek you the more, you're showing us more of your glory. You're showing us more of your attributes. You're showing us more of your way. You're showing us more of who you are, more of your your uh, um, um, understanding, more of your enlightenment, more of your uh, revelation of truth. We thank you, God, for the truth in your word, God, because we know, God, that is your word that sets us free. We thank you, Father, for the word of God that brings us life, that brings us faith, that brings us stability, that brings us um, Know how to to know how to journey through this life. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing in the lives of your people. We thank you, God, for stabilizing them in faith. We thank you, Father, for stabilizing them in truth. We thank you, Father, for stabilizing them in your will, your way. We thank you, Father, that you're beginning to um, um, stir up the desire to seek you the more. We thank you, Father, for touching us, God, to do these purpose tasks, God, that you called us to, Father, so that we can help men, women, boys, and girls get to you, Father. Encourage them, God, to seek you 
uh, so much the more, Father, because the time is now, Father, when there's blood running warm in their veins, Father, to come to you. Father, I pray, God, those that are not believers, those that are, have not committed their lives to you, Father, that they would um, uh, commit their lives, God, to trusting you, to believing you, to journey with you, Father, because it's in you that we live. God, it's in you that we move. It's in you that we have our being. We command, Father, their lives to change by the power and authority of the Holy Spirit. We send Holy Spirit, Father, as, as we begin to dig into your word, as we begin to move on this purpose path. God, allow your Holy Spirit, God, to arrest their hearts, Father, and begin to minister to them. Holy Spirit, do what you do. We pray for their families. We pray, God, that you would... Um, align their families with purpose, Father, because you created them for purpose, on purpose, and with purpose. Father, we thank you, God, that you're, you're aligning and realigning their families, God, because you not only call individuals, God, but you call families, you call nations. Father, I thank you, God, for what you're going to do in this hour in families, Father, that you're going to begin to raise them up, God. You're going to begin to reunite. You're going to begin to bring back love, bring back respect in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, God, that that daughter is submissive. We thank you, Father, that that son is submissive. We thank you, Father, that that mother and father are showing the love of Christ to their children. We thank you, Father, that we're beginning to um, um, bend to your will and obey what you're saying and what you're doing in our lives in this season. Father, we want to hear you clearly. Father God, give us the, the, the desire to turn up the volume in our hearing that we may obey what you say. Day, Father, because your word tells us that your sheep know your voice. Father, and in order to know your voice, we have to draw closer to you. Give us the desire, Father, to let go of the earthly things, God, that stop us, that hinder us, the, the um, uh, relationships that stop us, that hinder us from obeying the truth. We declare and we decree that we shall walk in another level of truth as never before, that we will hold to the word of God and not be shaken, hold to the promises of God and not be moved. We thank you, Father, that we'll recant, recount, regurgitate your word because your word is what we stand on. Your word, Father, is what we live for. Your word, Father, is what we're breathing for. Your word caused us to breathe, God. In the beginning, you spoke and you said, uh, uh, out of your mouth, let us make man, let uh, uh, the firmament, let us create, let us do, Father, and it's because of your word that we hear, Father. You spoke everything into existence, God. And if you can speak everything into existence in our lives, the word that you speak, there's life, there's movement, there's transition, there's joy, there's um, 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 activity in your word. The word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing and dividing asunder the soul and the spirit and joy tomorrow. We thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, God, that you'll never leave us or forsake us. We thank you, Father, that even when you're silent, you're teaching us, you're training us, you're equipping us, you're showing us, you're journeying with us. We thank you, Father, that those times that you're silent, God, that we're pressing in, we're pressing into your presence, Father. We're pressing into joy. We're pressing into peace. We're pressing into uh, uh, salvation. We're pressing into change. We thank you, Father, for the press as we begin to journey with you, Father. Let us not be weary in well-doing, but in due season, knowing, God, that your word will come to pass, because in your word, there's life. In your word, there's truth. We thank you, Father, that in this world, in this wicked world that we live in, we can hang our hat on your word. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you for seeking life in dead situations. We thank you for seeking life in turmoil. We thank you, God, for seeking life in uh, um, situations that were done over. They, they, they wrote the, the eulogy. They, they dug the grave site. But God, you said live. You said live, God, and Lazarus came forth. We thank you for all the Lazarus on this 
purpose past, God, that are coming forth in the name of Jesus. When they wrote the obituary, when they dug the grave site, they declared that it was over, it was finished, but you came on the scene. And you said to come forth. You said to lose him, lose her, and let her go. We thank you for the loosing. We thank you for the coming forth. Hallelujah. And we stand here in joy. We stand here in peace, declaring that your word is true, declaring that your word is life. We stand on your promises. 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 Your promises are yea, and in you they are amen. God, when you speak, it's settled. God, when you speak, it's done. God, when you speak, it's going to happen. God, when you speak, it's just a matter of time. We trust you at your word. We stand on your word. There's none like you, Father, when you couldn't find anybody else to swear by. Because you were sovereign, because you were just, because you understood that everything rests in your hands, you began to swear by your own name. Your name is good. Your name is good. We thank you for your name. Your name alone is worthy to be praised. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. We thank you for your name. We thank you for your name. We thank you for being a sovereign God. We thank you for being a holy God. We thank you for being a just God. You are a just God. You're a righteous judge. There's none like you. We search high. We search low. We search in and out. And we still can find nobody. Nobody can do us like you. Nobody can rock us in the midnight hour. Nobody can soothe our issues. Nobody can soothe our pain but you. We thank you, God, that we'll use praise as our weapon. We thank you, God, that we'll begin to use praise as our weapon. We thank you. We thank you. Just as Paul and Silas were locked in jail, they began to sing praises unto God. They were locked in jail for freeing somebody that had a spirit of divination. But God, you gave us a weapon. You gave us a weapon called praise. You gave us a weapon called worship. Anytime we feel, God, that we're locked up, bound up, chained up, oppressed, God, we can release the praises of God and every chain will drop. Everything around us will line up because of the weapons. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through you. To the pulling down of strongholds, we come against every high thing. We come against every stronghold that will exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ. We bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. In the name of Jesus, we take authority. Even now, we take authority over our day. We take authority and we declare and we decree that we're standing in faith, that we're standing in truth, that we're standing on the word of God, that we're standing on the weapons of our warfare, that we're standing on the promises of God. We take authority over our weak in the name of Jesus. We take authority. Satan, you have to go. You have no right. You have no legal access. We will not partner with you. We will not partner with your thoughts. We will not partner with your antics. We will not partner with you. We'll partner with Holy Spirit and declare and decree what thus saith the Lord. God, you're righteous. God, we thank you. God, we adore you. We worship you, God. Woo, hallelujah. We stand on your word. Hallelujah. We stand on your word. <laughs> oh, thank you, God. Thank you, your word. Oh, thank you. Just speak the word, God. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. If you just speak, my servant will be healed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for speaking. Thank you for speaking. Thank you for speaking. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you for walking with us. Thank you. Thank you for being concerned about us. Oh, we thank you. Oh, we worship you. Oh, we adore you. Thank you. Thank you. When, when, when my friends, my family threw me 
away. You were yet concerned about me. And you sent a visitor unto me. And I say, thank you. Yeah. When they threw me away with yesterday's trash, you said, flip on. Oh, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. God, you're worthy. Hallelujah. We worship you. You are everything, God. God, you are everything. It's in you that we live. It's in you that we move. Thank you. Oh, oh. Help us and teach us to know you, God, in a very real way. Take us out of the context of our thinking, God. Hallelujah. We thank you. We bless you. We worship you. We honor you. We adore you. Yes, it's to you. It's to you. It's to you. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But your word, who you are, is going to stand. We thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you, God, that we can rest on your word. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for staying the hand of the enemy. I rebuke everything that's against the will of God concerning you. I rebuke it now in the name of Jesus. I declare and I decree that you shall begin to have forward movement. You shall begin to lay hold of destiny. Your destiny is coming back. God's going to begin to visit you. I declare and I decree Holy Spirit begin to visit them in the night seasons. God, send your angels to minister to them in the night season. Even in their dreams, God began to stir them up as never before according to their destiny, Father. Bring their destiny back again and bring their purpose back again, the purpose in which you created them, just like you told Jeremiah, Father, that you knew him when you formed him in his mother's womb and you ordained him to be a prophet among the nations. God, take them back, God, to their origin in the name of Jesus that will they'll begin to understand the reason why they're here, Father, and that the spirit of frustration may back off. Some people are frustrated. I sense heavy frustration because you can't move forward. You don't know which direction to go, but God said it's in me. He says your direction is in me. He says your order is in me. Your structure is in me. Your discipline is in me. Your purpose is in me. Your destiny is in me. Come back to me, and I'll take you back to your origin, and I'll show you what I called you to do, and I'll set you up in a divine encounter, say it. Divine encounter, say it, God. I'll begin to set you up in divine encounters as you listen to my voice, as you listen to what I'm saying to you and what I'm taking you to. I'll begin to direct your path. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him. And he says, I'm going to begin to make your path straight. Some of us have been going on crooked paths. You've been trying any and everything to get to purpose, to get to destiny. And it's leaving you frustrated. It's leaving you broke. It's leaving you busted. It's leaving you disgusted. But God said, it's all in me. You have to come back to me because guess what? I created you and I put everything down on the inside of you that you'll need to journey through this life. If you come unto me, all ye that are labor and heavy laden, I'll I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. I just kind of don't want to leave this praise right here. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We bless you. He's good, y'all. Look, if he's good to you, just type in those comments. He's good, y'all. Look, testify to somebody else and tell them he's good, y'all. Type in the comments. Hurry, hurry, hurry. He's good, y'all. You need to testify. You need to make known his good deeds. You need to tell somebody else. And they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. Type in the comments. He's good, y'all. He's good, y'all. He's good. Is God good? Has he been a good, good?
Has he been a merciful God? Has he been an awesome God? Has he been your lily in the valley? Has he been your bright and morning star? Has he been your rose of Sharon? Has he been Jehovah Jireh, your provider? Oh, come on, type in there. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. Has he been good to you? He's good. He's good. I don't see you typing. I can't see the comments, but I need you to type. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's a good, good God. He's a good, good father. He's a good, good shepherd who looks after the sheep. Don't you believe the lie? God cares. He understands and he knows and he's concerned about you. Don't you believe that lie that the enemy is feeding you, that God is just sitting on the throne, just letting things happen? He's the orchestrator. He's the originator. He's orchestrating and directing traffic from the heavenlies. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Woo! He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. I still, look, maybe I'm missing it because I don't see nothing that y'all typed in. I want somebody to testify. He's good. Look, boy, maybe he ain't good to y'all. I'm going to leave you alone. I ain't going to make you testify. I ain't going to make you lie. <laughs> I won't make you lie, but he's good to me. He's a good, good God. He's a good, good father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. So, let's dive into this really quick. So we could go about our way. Wrestling with God may leave you limping. All right, let's go. Oh, see, I see y'all now. Okay, because I can't see the comments on here, but I can see them on my phone, so. Y'all with me? Y'all with me? He's good. He's good. Okay. So let's talk about Jacob, right? Last week we talked about Jacob and how <laughs> Jacob took the uh, birthright from his brother Esau, right? We talked about how Yes, come on. That's there. Y'all testifying. Okay, I see you. Okay, so today I want to talk about how Jacob wrestled with God. Some of us are wrestling with God in our flesh, and God's already spoken concerning us, He's already declared what the end is going to be. He's already declared his will concerning us. He's already declared what he's ordained for us. He's already declared what the outcome of our lives shall be. If he hasn't given you a prophetic word, it is the written word. It's in the book. So if you open up the book, you'll understand what God is saying concerning you. And if you get connected with the good Bible believing, uh, um, living church, you, you'll get further instruction in the way of God. So Jacob wrestled with God after he had tricked his brother out of his birthright. His mother, Rebecca, trained him up and taught him Hold on, guys. I'm sweating. Let me get a uh, something for five. Yeah, it caused me to sweat. Like Sunday morning. And I really don't sweat, but I just sweat it. I got sweating my hair out and everything. So anyway, so Jacob wrestled with God. And if any of you know the story of Jacob. Jacob uh, stole his brother 
Esau's uh, birthright, right? His mother, Rebecca, loved him. And these are descendants of Abraham. Isaac is, is their father. Isaac is their father. Isaac is Abraham's um, son, the promised seed. And what did God promise Abraham? That he would make him a father of many nations. We cannot afford to wrestle with God in our flesh when God has already declared to us what the end is going to be, when God has already given us the written word that we are to back up our lives according to, that if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. So all I have to do is be willing. All I have to do is be obedient to eat the good of the land because his word declares that. So I have to stand in faith and believe what the word of God says, right? Did you guys share the video? Share the video and invite some people on. Share the video. So all we have to do is believe the word of God and wait for the manifestation of what God said to come to pass. So Jacob wrestles with the angel. He gets into it with his um, uncle Laban because his mother sent him to his uncle to flee his brother Esau. It was all kind of dysfunction. And when you get a chance, you can go back and read the story, Genesis 25 and 22. All kind of dysfunction was in this family. There were so many lies, tricks, deceit, and um, uh, just plain old dysfunction, just dysfunctional. <laughs> so it was all this dysfunction in the family. And, and here Jacob is, after he fled his uncle Laban, because Laban lied to him several times about the wife that he wanted, which was Rachel. He gave her him. He tricked him just like uh, Jacob and Rebecca tricked um, Isaac. <clears throat> they tricked Jacob the same. So it came back to bite him. What he did to his father and his brother came back to bite him. But I want to take it back just a little bit when Rebecca was pregnant with uh, Jacob and Esau. There was something going on in utero with the twins and she went to God. She took the twins, she took her situation to God and asked God, hey, look here, I know you promised us these babies. I know my husband laid his hand on me and I know I'm old having these babies. I know I had a problem conceiving, but we sought you and you um, blessed us. Now I'm paraphrasing, so you got to go back and read it yourself, Genesis 25. And you blessed us to have these babies. What's going on on the inside of me with these two twins? So, or probably just with these, what's going on inside of me? Because at that time, they didn't have ultrasounds. So she probably didn't even know she had twins until they were delivered. So she hears God. He speaks concerning what's going on inside of her. Now, here's the shout. We have to stop going to people that cannot understand the purpose on the inside of us. We have to stop taking our purpose and what God has impregnated us with to those that cannot understand the purpose of God. We have to stop taking what God has placed on the inside of us to those that cannot diagnose the situation according to the will of God. We have to take everything to God in prayer and wait for the answer. The problem is that in today's society, we don't want to wait for the answer. We want it quick. We want it fast. And we want it in a hurry. We want God to give us answer. We want God to prophesy. We want it to come out of the sky. We want God to do it now. We want the prophecy to manifest now. We want the, the blessings of God to manifest now without any equipping, without any training, without any um, um, soul development. You cannot access the favor of God, the promises of God, the, 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 the provision of God without 
soul development. Your soul has to be developed. Your soul has to journey well. Your soul has to mature. God is not a wasteful God. So he's not going to throw things at you that you're not ready for. You have to be ready for the things of God because he's not a wasteful God. So he's not going to give it to you and you waste it. You treat it wrong. You mishandle. You're not a good steward over what he gives you, what he opens for you, what he allows you to access. So you have to have some soul development in the promise. So here Rebecca is taking the babies. She's taking them over to God. She's praying, asking God, Lord, diagnose this. What's going on in here? When we're having trouble and we're having issues and it looks like the situation may be contrary to what God said, we have to take it back to the originator. We have to take it back to the one that gave it to us, right? You have to take your purpose back to God. You have to take your children back to God. You have to take your families back to God. You have to take your uh, 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 careers back to God. You have to take your gifts back to God so that he can diagnose because he is the doctor of all doctors. He is the uh, 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 best ultra sound technician that there is. He can diagnose what's going on on the inside of me. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is the discerner of the thought and the intent of the heart. So the Holy Spirit is the one that can go in and divide, asunder, soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and he can understand what's taking place in this body, in this mind, in this heart. So Rebecca takes her babies to God and she says, Lord, what's going on? He said, you got two nations on the inside of you. Rebecca Tomban de Christia. Woo! These two nations are having issues on the inside of you. I'm paraphrasing. You got to go back and read it for yourself. You only got a little time. So I got to make me a smoothie this morning before I leave the house. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so these two nations are at war on the inside. They're having problems on the inside of Rebecca. But he says, look, the uh, older uh, son is going to um, serve the younger. Am I saying that right? I don't want to say it wrong. So Genesis 25, guys, okay? So go back and read it for yourself. Two nations are in your room, and two peoples from within you will be, uh, you will be separated one will be stronger than the other. The older will serve the younger. And that's what I said. So Esau is going to serve Jacob. Now listen, this is in utero. This is while they're in the belly that God says this, right? So let's go back to Jacob when he's wrestling after he stole the birthright. See, Rebecca and Jacob are trying to manipulate the situation when God already spoke in the beginning what was going to take place. He already uh, told Rebecca what was going to happen. Did God foresee um, their mishandling of the situation? No, I believe God is just God, and he, he knows the ins and outs of what he's saying. He could have said, um, this is what I've ordained, but you're going to mess it up, and this is what's going to happen. No, he said, listen, the older one is going to serve the younger one. So, so Jacob, after he uh, leaves Laban, he's fleeing Laban because Laban is just like, made Jacob work for years for these women, tricked him, got him all messed up got him all discombobulated so he's running right he's running he got every he got the women the kids hide your wife hide your kids you know <laughs> so he's fleeing from Laban and he's also having to deal with what he did to his brother Esau he's having to deal with what he did to his brother Esau now mind you God has already spoken concerning Jacob in the womb. 
God had already said that Jacob was going to be the one with the birthright. Jacob was going to be the one that uh, uh, was blessed. Jacob was going to be the one that was exceedingly great. Great. Jacob was going to be the one that Esau would serve. So God already spoke it. God already said it. So all Rebecca and Jacob had to do was believe God. The problem comes when we try to manipulate and have to orchestrate our hands in what God does. If we just believe him, trust him at his word, live holy, and serve him, he knows how to bring the pieces and the people in place to get the job done. So Jacob uh, has his brother that's waiting on him because his brother wants revenge for what he did to him, Esau. He has Laban behind him, and he's like, look, if I go forward, my brother is about to kill me. If I go backwards, my uncle is going to kill me because of what I did there. I need help. So he's exhausted from running. He's exhausted. So Jacob's name means trickster, grabber. So Jacob, uh, yes, God does not need our help. All he needs is our faith to believe. Especially, now listen. There are some things that God will give you instruction to do. What did he tell Abraham? He said, go to a land that I will show you. So Abraham had to do something to partner with God. He had to get up and he had to go. So God will give you instructions, but God does not need you to orchestrate it. You have to be led of the Holy Spirit. He will give you instructions, but you don't need to orchestrate it, okay? God is the orchestrator. God is the one directing your life. God is the one that's leading your life. We're led of Holy Spirit because we are the sons of God. All we have to do is declare the word, stand in faith, decree what God says, um, worship him through it, Stand in faith and believe it. Don't succumb to the dictates of what the enemy is whispering. He's good at that. He knows how to whisper thoughts. He knows how to whisper um, um, things in people's ears to get them to succumb to his tactics. He cannot um, 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 possess you, but he can um, whisper and get you to partner with those demonic spirits through thought through suggestion. So what he'll try to do is he'll try to say, God is not going to do it. It's been 30 years since he spoke it. So then he gets you to partner with doubt. And then you begin to join forces with doubt and doubt can overtake you and dull the promises of God. So don't give in. This is why the Bible says casting down every high thing, every um, uh, uh, imagination, uh, and that's in the mind that will exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So we have to bring our thoughts to the obedience of Christ. And I'm sure during this time, Jacob was having all kind of racing thoughts. He was tired in his flesh. He had all these people with him, his wife and his children. He had all of them with him and he's tired of fighting. He's tired of the battle. He's like, Lord, I just need your help. So an angel comes down and visits him and they get into this wrestling match, right? And Jacob's like, like, I'm tired of this. You know, I've been fighting and Laban this and Laban that. I need God to help me. Where is God? You know, I'm just like, this is Sherry you know, one-on-one. So uh, they're fighting and they're wrestling and he's like, no, I ain't letting you go. The angel's like, I gotta go. I got work to do. <laughs> Let me go, man. And he's like, no, I ain't letting you go. I'm not letting you go. But was he wrestling in his flesh? Was Because God already spoke concerning Jacob. All Jacob had to do, all Rebecca had to do was stand and believe God. But they tried to orchestrate it and they tried to put their hands in it, which messed some things up and caused them to partner with deception. It caused them to partner with trick trickery. It caused them to partner with, uh, what fear did we say? Um, 
manipulation. It caused them to partner with manipulation. It caused them to partner with fear. It caused them to partner with all these spirits because they did not stand in faith. What have you partnered with? Because you refuse to believe God. Just simply believe him at his word. Believe what he said. Believe what he spoke. Believe what he promised in the face of all odds. We have to stand on the truth of his word. And when it doesn't look like it's going to manifest because you're living holy, because Sin is a, uh, a deterrent for the will of God. You cannot have sin in your life and expect the promises and the, the, the blessings of God to just overtake you. Have to have, the Bible says, he who has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. So keep your heart and your lives pure before God. When you keep your heart and your lives pure before God, you can rest assured that his word is going to come as in your life. Now, if you just in case sin messed up, uh, uh, um, did something against God, you can always go back to him because he said he's faithful and just to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So he's faithful and just. He's going to cleanse you. He's going to heal you. He's going to uh, 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 give you a quick little tap on the butt and get you on your way because he's a faithful God. He's a loving God. He's going to discipline you and chastise you in it. He's going to show you. He's going to train you. He's going to um, enlighten you in what you messed up. So guess what? You don't have to return back to that same vomit. You don't have to return back to that ill situation, that situation that hindered you and stopped you from obeying the truth. So here Jacob is wrestling. He's wrestling in his flesh with God. We cannot afford to wrestle in our flesh. If we wrestle with God in our flesh, we will walk away limping. We will live life with something that we did not come here with. When you wrestle with God in your flesh, you're subject to uh, 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 issues. When you wrestle with God, now he's wrestling with the word that's already been declared. He's wrestling. Yes, it's good that Jacob came to himself. Yes, it's good that Jacob desired God. But did he desire, uh, 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 it wasn't until he got tired of wrestling that the angel was able to uh, uh, knock his joint out of place. When Jacob got tired of wrestling, he said, look, now your name is going to be changed and it's going to be you wrestled with God. It's going from trickster to wrestled with God. So now his name is changed from Jacob to Israel because he wrestled in his flesh with God. All we have to do is stand on his promises because the Bible says that his promises are yea and in them they are amen. The problem was all of the dirt that Jacob had done which caused him to believe that God had to make a change in his life. But God already told Jacob in the beginning when he was pregnant with, when, when his mother was pregnant with him, that his brother was going to serve him and he was going to be a great nation. God already promised Jacob the end before it, everything played out. Believe God. Stand in faith. Believe him for what he said. Trust him. Lean on him. Not to your own understanding. Don't put your hand in it. Don't try to orchestrate it. Stop trying to make all the right connections. Stop trying to make all the right Facebook friends. Stop trying to make all the right, um, uh, just do what God said to you. When you're obedient and you're willing, you shall eat the good of the land. He's going to put the people in place that you need. He's going to put the business partners in place. He's going to put those, look, the business partner may be at the grocery store. The business 
business partner may be at the uh, 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 the uh, uh, oil chain shop. The business partner may be at a job that you have to encounter. But trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. That's his word. And because his word said it, you can hang your hat on it, live holy and righteous, and say, Lord, direct me. Because he's already directing traffic. The problem is when we try to put our hands in it. So get your hands out of the pot. Get your hands out of the mix. Yes, your gift will make room for you in the earth. Your gift, gift will uh, manifest. Your gift will be shown. Your gift will. But look, make sure that heart is right. And it's not because you want to be seen that you want your gift to be made known. Look, if I had it my way, I wouldn't be doing this. I wouldn't be on here. People that know me personally know. But because I love God. Because guess what? There are many false prophets on this here social media. <laughs> But I love God, and I want to obey what he's telling me to do in this hour, in this season. I look. I got to get off here because I told you I got to make my smoothie. Oh, yeah, pray for me. As I pray for you, I pray that you were blessed. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll talk about this some more. We're going to dig into this a little bit more. Um, wrestling with God. Don't wrestle with God in your flesh. Just believe him. Believe him in faith. Um, stand on his word. Worship him through what you're going through. Worship him through the, the times of testing, the times of tempt temptation that the enemy brings on you because God's not going to tempt you. And then we're tempted and led astray by our own lust and desires. It's what's in you that leads you astray. So get you right. Get that soul right. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew the right spirit within me. Don't wrestle in your flesh with God. Submit to the will of God concerning your life. Submit to his will. Acknowledge him. Father, I pray for those that are not believers on here, that they would come to the knowledge and the realization, God, that they need you, that if they would confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in their heart that, God, you raised Jesus, your son, from the dead, he rose from the grave on the third day with all power. And through him, we have salvation. Through him, we have access to heaven. We thank you, Father, that they'll believe it, they'll confess it, and they'll start their journey of a new life with you, God. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Love you all with the love of the Lord. And I love you with my love. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate your uh, support. Share the video. Listen, Women of Purpose 2018 Conference. We are taking registration. You don't want to miss Women of Purpose. Women of Purpose is just all the way live. Look, it's all the way live. It's when I tell you it's all the way live, don't miss it. It's powerful, power pack. We've got some good things coming this year. The Lord is really expanding us. We have a great team of ladies that um, have joined forces and are lending their gifts and resources to push God's agenda in um, the earth. So Women of Purpose 2018, uh, and we do travel. We do take engagement. Um, Women of Purpose is definitely life-changing, so you don't want to miss it. Um, share this video. Invite some people on. We're on the move. Um, Women of Purpose International Conference. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Be blessed.